In this video, I'll show you how to live stream to YouTube using a DSLR or mirrorless camera. When it comes to live streaming, there are a ton of options when it comes to cameras, classic web cameras or phone cameras, and of course, DSLR slash mirrorless cameras. Not only can you capture a higher quality image, but you just have more variety due to camera lenses, camera sensors, and the different output options that mirrorless cameras offer. Now, there are many ways that you can live stream to YouTube using free software like OBS, direct to YouTube itself, through your phone, or the way I'm going to be doing it, using StreamYard. StreamYard is a browser-based live streaming and recording platform that has a forever free version and paid options. I'll have an affiliate link for StreamYard linked in the description down below so you can give StreamYard a try risk-free and without a watermark. Before we get too deep into live streaming and gear, we need to talk about internet speeds. StreamYard recommends at a bare minimum that you have 5 megabytes upload and download speed before you start live streaming. To test, just Google speed test and run the test. It'll let you know your speeds and, as you can see, mine is more than above the requirement. I'd recommend, if you can, a hardwired connection, aka an ethernet cable connected to your device, that way you have a more stable streaming experience. But if you're like me and for some reason your internet is literally on the other side of your home, I completely understand and Wi-Fi should be able to work just fine. Just wanted to flag that you should, if you can, use an ethernet connection. Once you have your internet situation figured out, there are many different ways that you can live streams with webcam or DSLRs but I'm going to be focused on two different ways for this video. The first way is using the Elgato Cam Link 4K. This camera is using the Elgato Cam Link 4K. The Elgato Cam Link 4K may not support your camera if your setup is different than mine, and you can check out on their website, which will be linked in the description down below, for what cameras they do and don't support. For this video, I'm using the Panasonic G7 and the Sony ZV-E10. When I check the camera checker, I can see the Panasonic G7 is compatible with the Cam Link 4K and it is what I use to livestream on this YouTube channel. The Panasonic G7 does require what's known as a dummy battery. I'll have affiliate links for all the gear I'm using in this video in the description down below so you can check out exactly what I'm using. A dummy battery goes into your camera and plugs directly into the wall and is way more reliable than just batteries. Camera batteries can die midstream and nothing is worse than your camera dying in the middle of the recording. Here are my Panasonic G7 settings. I have the color profile set to natural and keep the image at 4K at 30 frames per second. In the setup menu, look for the wrench icon here. Head to the third setup menu and select TV connection. Switch this to off and that's how you can have a clean HDMI output. If I didn't change this, I'd have these icons on my stream and I don't want that. When it comes to live streaming with the Sony ZV-E10, all you need is the camera itself, a USB-C cable, and just to tweak some settings. I've placed my Sony camera here on the side so you have a different angle as I'm going through this tutorial and you can have that for your live streams too. Then like before, just check your camera settings. I want to make sure we don't need a dummy battery, so we're going to make our way to setup menu number 3 and select USB power supply and change it to on. Then make your way to this icon and select USB streaming. Now you can have a higher quality image, provide power, and stream all using one cable. But do keep in mind, while this camera is nice, Sony is notorious for having overheating issues when it comes to their cameras. In fact, I had overheating issues during this recording. So as I was recording this video, I literally got the, your camera temperature has risen, stop shooting if you are in shoot mode. So just goes to show what I was talking about when it comes to live streaming or recording. What can happen is the camera itself just gets too hot and it can shut off, which again is not something ideally you'd want when you're live streaming or recording. So while this camera is amazing and I do use it for live streaming, there's a reason my Panasonic G7 has still remained my number one live streaming webcam and that mostly is because of its longevity and I've never had overheating issues. In fact, when I did my 24 hour live stream, it was the Panasonic G7 that got me all the way through it and it still was going long into it. I know this because I accidentally forgot to turn it off and it was still good. So again, when it comes to that overheating issue, just something to keep in mind. With all that said though, I'd still recommend the camera and do use it daily. Now that we've talked about both cameras, here's how you can set up multiple camera streaming within StreamYard. Once you're in StreamYard, make your way to present at the bottom, then click on extra camera. This is gonna give you two choices for camera and quality. For camera, I'm going to go ahead and select my Sony ZV-E10 as I set up before, and for quality, I'm just going to leave this at 1080p, which is what I'm going to stream in. Then all I need to do is click share, but I'm not done yet. I need to click at the bottom here, add to stage, to bring in this new camera feed, whether I'm recording or live streaming, so they can get two different camera angles. Now, multiple cameras does require the paid version of StreamYard, but 
I do have that affiliate link free trial in the description down below. And a pro tip is if you have multiple browsers, just log into StreamYard as a guest in a new browser window and you can get multiple cameras. Now from here, I can choose to have both of these on the same size, kind of a split screen situation. This is really useful if I wanna show something off like this plush of puddles. Maybe I wanna give a different angle that you can't see. Another cool use case for this is let's say I'm a gamer and on my Sony here, I could easily just show me using my mouse in a different way and it provides a lot of extra value to those watching. Again, when you're using multiple camera angles, it is so critical to think what value does having this camera angle add to my audience. And the cool thing about multiple camera angles, the possibilities are endless and up to us as creators to utilize. And that's one of my favorite reasons to use multiple cameras. And while multiple cameras are great and this gear is fun to use, it's not as important as what you have to say to your audience when you're live streaming. When it comes to live streaming, there's just something about that format that allows you to have a deeper connection with your audience than even this video could do. If you need help when it comes to your next live stream, check out that video all about SEO and how it can be used to help you connect deeper to what your audience is actually looking for. Speaking of the audience, thank you for watching and to my YouTube members for making these videos possible. As always, I'm Andrew Can, and if I can live stream with multiple camera angles, then you can too.